Well, listeners, now it is time to take a look at a film that is out on streaming platforms right now. It is an Aussie film called The Dealer, and today we thought we would actually get the director of the film on the phone to chat a little bit about this amazing new film. So welcome to the program, Francesco. Thank you so much, Dave. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, mate, this brand new movie, The Dealer, it's gritty. It is one of those films that when you start to watch it, you just cannot turn away from it because of um, of how suspenseful it is. Tell us a little bit about The Dealer and how this film came into being for you. So, my oldest boy, Mateus, who actually features in the film, he actually produced a media project some time ago during his final years of study in high school. And I was in the throes of trying to get a film off the ground. And The Dealer was a project that I had originally created back in 2010. I worked on around about six to seven different iterations of it over four years for a couple of Greek film producers here in Melbourne. And we got to a stage where the project for them wasn't wasn't doing what they wanted it to do for for what they were looking for, which was fine. So I actually shelved it. And when my son um, hit high school and was doing his final year of studies in media, I watched him produce a music video and he really awakened my eyes to the possibilities of making a feature with today's technology. So I pitched him the dealer because it was a project I was still very, very passionate about. And together we restructured the story and took it from its original setting and placed it in a nondescript setting somewhere in the hills and made the primary audience and and the primary um, actors in the film and the characters children-based with a small adult contingent supporting them. So it was one of those passion pieces that, I was really keen to work on, particularly with him, because he had gone through very similar experiences, being bullied when he was young. And I myself, being a migrant to this country, had gone through my own kind of experiences in the early days. So that's how it all came about. What was it about your son's uh, media project that kind of showed you that this was possible now? Like, was there a, was there something in particular that kind of showed you, hey, we can do this? Yeah, look, what what showed me that we can do it is is the fact that they were using easy easy to use technology. I mean, they, they were using After Effects for their visual effects. Um, they were using um, SLR cameras to shoot um, some of this music video. They were. They were using location-based work that was easy to get to. I think for myself, I came from a, a film background in the early days in the 80s where you thought of film as big, gigantic um, cameras and, and, and big light setups, and you always thought of Hollywood as being the, the, the penultimate sort of, you know, that's where you want to get to and that's the kind of movies you want to make. And today, though, with mobile phone technology, Um, with the ability to edit um, online from the comfort of your own home, from a small space. All of that was stuff that I had really just lost connection with and he really brought that to the forefront for me. And when we started looking at it, we just knew that the possibilities were there. Originally, we were only going to shoot a 90-minute thriller with three actors and three filmmakers. So the, the, the initial idea was going to be small and taut and it was supposed to be a, a three-hander that we were going to try and pull off very quickly. But um, as we started building the background to this story and, and, and laying out the plot and everything else that was going on, we discovered that it, it was too important a story to make so uh, insignificant in, in what we were trying to achieve. We, we really started to dabble into social media we started to dabble into social media as an addiction and then all the other addictions that affect it and then we we dived quite deeply into bullying and everything else so that's when we realized we needed to crew up and we crewed up with we ended up with around about 15 people on the crew 15 or 20 coming came and went across the period of a year 
and the cast went from three to 70, including the extras, so it got quite big. So tell us a little bit about that process of adapting it from the original idea. Like you said, there were a few new ideas that came in there and a lot of things that made it so that you could actually shoot it. Tell us a little bit about that process. How long did that take you and was that a difficult process adapting it from the from the original form of the dealer? So the original concept was actually for a mature age audience. So it was originally set in a country home with um, three mature age women and the situation was was that they ended up in a, a game of Russian roulette. I always wanted to make a film. I was very intrigued with the idea of making a film about Russian roulette. And so that was the original concept um, that I worked with. And when I took a break, I, I started doing a lot of research into um, the suicide forest in Japan. I started looking at uh, the increase of the suicide rate across the world within youth. I started looking at um, the idea of how addiction, particularly social media addiction and the addiction behind um, finding comfort from bullying and, and harassment and all that sort of stuff, how that could actually get out of hand and how far it could go and what the effects could ultimately be, um, particularly within children. Um, and being a father myself, by that stage, I had raised four boys. So over the period of, of those years, I started learning a lot about what they were going through and, and their opinions about social media and, and the changes within within the spectrum of youth and, and culture and all of those things. So to to take the original script and, and move it across to that, was it, it was quite easy in that I had four boys to feed off. Uh, predominantly, Mateos and I worked diligently over a period of three months, were, uh, reworking the the idea of the story and the outline and the plot. Um, the original concept of the game of Russian roulette was always going to be in it. That was the driving force. And for me, it was just a matter of building uh, a, a realistic universe uh, that young people could watch within this film and connect in some way, shape or form to, you know, the, the, the goings on and, and the feelings and the emotions behind a lot of what was happening. So um, we spent three months on that. And then during that three month period, um, I actually wrote the first 30 pages of the script and we started crewing and casting pretty much straight away. And then it wasn't until the following about three or four months later after Christmas that I wrote the remainder of the script and then we we were shooting predominantly uh, for a period of almost a year um, across 26 days within a year and um, yeah so it was a uh, it was a lot of deep diving a lot of um, soul searching and a lot of very honest discussions between myself and my son um, about the best way to flesh out a story that would be um, both innocent but um, effective as well I was going to ask that, um, of course, when I was at high school, being an alternative kid, it wasn't always um, an easy time either, but back in those times, we didn't have social media or online, and I dread to think what how bullies use online and um, social media these days to, to target their victim 24-7, but was it a bit of a wake-up for you as well when you actually sat down to talk to your boys uh, about things like that? Yeah, look, I'm, I'm blessed in that my boys, they have social media, but they started looking at social media when they were older. So my, when they were young, they weren't really interested at all. Um, we're a, predominantly a very artistic, creative sort of family. Yeah. And my boys were predominantly just focused on their education during their, their high school years. And it wasn't until really they became men that they started delving into social media. And um, so we weren't we weren't confronted by any of the challenges that they, you know, that, that other that other kids have experienced with social media bullying and harassment and all that sort of stuff. But they were very well aware of it because they've got friends and, and connections within their social circle, and they were aware of other uh, people that they were that they knew of that were going through similar things. I guess what was confronting is 
that it's become so predominant. It's it's gone from the playground to the computer. It's gone from the playground to the phone. It's gone from the face to face to hiding behind shadows. And that's what we wanted to play with within the film was you don't know who's hiding behind those shadows. You don't know what they're thinking, what they're capable of, why they're doing what they're doing. You only really get to see the aftermath of the effect it has on some people and and how the the immaturity of it can drive particularly young people today to really seek some form of of escape from it because it is a 24 7 thing i mean the, the message in the film at the end is is turn it off but yeah. it is difficult for some people to do that it is difficult for some young people to be able to turn it off because it does become an addiction and that was one of the reasons why when we were developing the project and then we started shooting the film we talked about the fact that it begins with addiction that's our tagline in the story is it actually it, you're already in it from the moment the film starts because in today's society what we discovered just you know with some of the kids we were working with is they just find themselves in social media they don't they don't really backtrack how they got there they just they just wake up one day and it's it's they're submerged in it and yeah. i think that's what frightened us the most is just how submerged a young person can be and how hard it can be to pull them back out definitely francisco how did you go about casting this film did you um work with actors and actresses that you and your family knew or did you go out and just do a complete cold casting call we actually put a call out. We predominantly used Star Now in the beginning. Um, we also had our own network. Uh, my wife and I, Kiri, we've been around for quite some time in that space. So we reached out through our own network. We had some, some actor friends who actually made recommendations about certain people. So the distributor, which is played by Delico Rio, was actually a recommendation from a friend. And we also reached out to student actors as well as the professional ones so we actually had a response from uh, young students studying at the victorian college of the arts at the time uh, they were very keen to audition um, tamara lee bailey was actually the uh, one of the ones that we found at uh, the st kilda film festival and she she had just started her first year at vca and then um, the other professional actors like uh, anne mccaffrey who plays a detective She's actually a local within my area and, and she found out about the project. So we caught up for coffee nearby and we had a really good deep discussion about um, what the project was about. So we actually, we put the call out, we had network connections, but we, we didn't just do auditions. What we actually did was Mateus and myself, we visited every actor that was interested in being in this film. We actually sat with them and we talked about um, why they were interested we talked about them as people as young people we wanted the film to have that that youth feel and so we took the time to sit with these young people and get to know them and understand their world and then really give them an opportunity to to question us about the world we were going to be actually capturing and, and exploring so it was a very um it was a, uh, a comfortable, we made it, we, we tried to make it as comfortable as possible for everybody to to feel free to express themselves in, in making this film and, and feel the emotion because it is actually an emotional roller coaster and we really needed young people that were prepared to go on that roller coaster with us. Talking about it being a roller coaster, so, uh, what was it like on set as well? Because it's a pretty intense film. What was it like working with everybody um, on set? We tried to keep it as light as possible. Um, one of the biggest things that we discovered makes people very, very happy is lots and lots of food. Yeah. And uh, my wife is uh, is an avid uh, foodie, um, and so we we tried to make sure that people um, were as 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 happy as possible during the days um, and the nights that we shot this film, even during the darkest moments of the film. Uh, we we kept we kept the set light but not overly humorous or anything like that. We we just tried to make sure people had their space. The actors took 
the roles very, very seriously. They took the material very seriously, so we gave them their space when they needed it. And everybody just worked diligently. We worked very hard. We worked very fast. Um, we had some quick turnovers on, on some of those days and nights, and um, we just made sure that people felt safe. That was the predominant thing, I think, is we wanted to make sure they felt safe to dive into these worlds and uh, and that they felt supported in what we were trying to achieve. So I spent a lot of my time with the actors just having very lengthy, very detailed conversations. Um, and the crew was just sensational because they were young and they were just keen and really brought their own contribution as well as we were making the film. Yeah, It was a very collaborative set, even though the script was there. Um, we spoke about what we were trying to achieve and how best to achieve it. So I really relied heavily on my crew to to just share and, and be present in the moment with respect to what we were trying to achieve. Well, Francisco, the result is an absolutely amazing film. So congratulations. And I guess to finish off, what would you like to say to people out there who are about to go out and watch The Dealer on a streaming platform near them? I'd say just be open to it. Be uh, and and watch it with your watch it with your family. Watch it with your kids. Um, some of the best feedback that we've had is we've had some audience members actually contact us directly who've told us that it's actually um, inspired them to have conversations with their kids, um, and it's inspired them to to look at their reality what's their world like today because it, it has changed dramatically i mean even when i was young um that the world has changed and uh, and so you you just have to be you have to be present and i think that's that's what you need to be when you watch the dealer just be present um take it for what it is and and uh allow yourself to feel whatever it is that makes you feel so um, yeah but thank you so much uh, david it's been a real pleasure and thank you so much for your support